For this Chef Talk with Kyle Cherick, I catch a beer in a conversation with Chef Casey Trumbull, the executive chef of Brasserie V. He has just been cooking in Madison for six months, came by way of New York and a few other locations, and he has already been hit with this great beer-centric cuisine. It's Casey Trumbull at Brasserie V and Chef Talk with Kyle Cherick. So you <laughs> grew up in Kansas City. You cooked in New York. Primarily at, mm. at, at super dope, better Soho type hotels. Oh yeah, and then you went to Knoxville, mm -hmm. which, <laughs> and then you came to Madison, which may be the polar opposite, right? The bizarro world of Knoxville. Yes, yeah, that would be a very accurate statement. Yeah, is that <laughs> how you find it within your chef path? Um, yeah, well, you know, I uh, I spent about nine years in uh, in New York uh, learning how to, uh, you know, do a lot of things um, well. And moving to Knoxville, I was basically told that I needed to uh, supervise a bunch of people that, like, could barely poach chicken. And, mm -hmm. and no one seemed to care, you know, like my chef didn't really care. Um, and then moving here to, to Madison, where everyone seems to uh, care about the food they eat. You know, like somebody going out... I get questions about where our lettuce is from, you know, and I, I like stuff like that. People that are conscious of the things that they're eating and they, they care that I source things locally is, is a, uh, it's sort of a revelation to, to what I spent doing in, uh, in Knoxville. There's the expression within the chef world. There's two types of chefs. Mm -hmm. Chefs that have cooked in New York and chefs that haven't. Sure. Do you subscribe to that whole paradigm of, I, you know, what New York does to you? New York does a lot of things to you. That's that's for sure. Um, there's something New York does to you that nowhere else will do to you. The sort of uh, sense of urgency, the sense of preparedness that you get from working in New York, um, you might only get there and maybe a handful of other places. Um, is it something you have to have? No, I don't think so. I mean, there people are doing good food everywhere that haven't been to New York. But I, I definitely think that it it gives you some sort of an advantage having that. Um, thought process in, in your, your daily routine. Do you think it makes you a better executive chef because you, you lived in that environment where there was a, a toe in your back, per se, in the kitchen and there were also people waiting for your job? Yes. Yes, I still sort of feel that. Where it's like, I think if I don't do this better than everybody else, there will be somebody, there's, you know, there's two or three guys behind me that want my job and will work for less money. You know, so I, I need to do everything better than everyone else all the time. How do you pass that on to your crew in the kitchen? I tell them I expect them to do everything at least as good as, as I ask them to do it, you know, and I, I hold them accountable for, for everything that they do. Yeah. And what gives you the right to turn out Belgian French food uh, with an awesome beer selection coming from Europe mm -hmm. when you never cooked in that style before you got this job? Uh, well, you know, I mean, I've never cooked in this, this sort of gastropub style, but I think a lot of the food that I have done in the past does lend itself uh, very well to this uh, type of environment because, um, you know, my, my style in the past and what I've been trying to um, progressively get better at is simple, simple food, you know, and it's it, not simple, but well done food. Like, you, more ingredients doesn't equal a better dish. Party fillets. One is rare. Some play one rare. One chicken. Party style. Seven party salmon. 